Matt here, um, and uh, we are live. Hi, Jane. Hi, Donna. Hi, Anne. Hello again. Hello, Graham. Felicity. Great to see everyone joining. Uh, Martin, Patricia, Dunk, um, Dean, uh, Mary, David. Um, hi, hi, hi. I hope everyone's well today. Keeping safe and positive and um and we've got a good session ahead now we're just waiting on a couple more people so um it's just a couple of minutes after two we usually have a few more people join um just a few minutes afterwards so we'll be a bit patient and wait for everyone to join in um yeah good to see everyone hi ricky hi Alison. hi again hi maggie Hey, uh, Maggie, I looked at the admin on our website. Loads, loads of improvements to do, Maggie says. Think um, I, you'll ask us to work on it. Well, um, thank you very much, Maggie. Really um, appreciate you thinking of us and um, more than happy to help out. Um, um, I've had a few people contact me um, for some advice and help. Um, and uh, uh, we've, we've done that. Um, and we've, we've, we've left people with some good tips. Um, now, you may notice that I'm not alone today. So there is somebody else in the room. Now, where is he? There he is. His name is Daniel Lescano, and um, he's got his microphone on. So you might as well say hi quickly, Dan. Hi, guys. Uh, hi. Very uh, so happy to be hi, here. Hi, Matt. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dan. Good to see you. Um, so everyone, we've got Dan joining us today. Um, so this is going to be a little bit different today. Um, and what I've effectively done today is handed it over to Dan. Now, um, that means everything you're going to see is, um, Dan's, own, <coughs> Dan's created it and Dan's come up with all of these tips. Um, because he, if you don't know already, I've been introducing him all week. He is the, our head of Google ads and Microsoft ads in the company. So, um, yes, you are in front of the guy that manages the team at InfoServe, um, who manages um, thousands, um, lots and lots of campaigns for businesses in the UK. Uh, myself and Dan are lucky enough to spend a lot of time at the Google headquarters in London. If anyone's been, it's just next to King's Cross, um, King's Cross Station. Um, so me and Dan often spend time at Google and, of course, the Microsoft office. Um, and we've spent a lot of time in their Dublin office. They've got a beautiful new office in Dublin, Microsoft. So if you get a chance, check out there um, on, on, on Microsoft, on, <laughs> on Bing. Have a look at the uh, office on there. Some pictures. Beautiful place. Um, and so we're lucky enough to spend time at Microsoft and, uh, and Google. And um, Dan is the man who um, knows everything, everything about Google Ads and Microsoft Ads. Um, so I want to introduce you to Daniel today because he is now on hand to answer some more of those kind of technical questions and advanced questions. Um, I want to give everyone a bit of a forewarning for this. Um, we're, we're now ramping this up in terms of technicality and um, advanced marketing. So if you are looking to drive more inquiries to your business, um, if you want leads, if you want business, um, Google Ads and Microsoft Ads are, are the way to do that. Um, uh, I gave a few examples the other day. Um, we run many campaigns um, and, and a lot of those campaigns see high returns on investment. So for example, one of our customers spends £900 a month and over 12 months, he was telling us it's the air control um, company that we mentioned, uh, uh, £900 a month. And over 12 months, he's seen a return. And his words, not mine, from the, ad, the campaign that we, we help him with, he's seen a return of £200,000. And that's over 12 months. So if you, if you want to see a return, if you want to really take your business to that next level, this session is it. But I have to say, it, some of it is quite advanced. And, 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 and it, you know, if there's any questions or any concerns or, or you think you're missing out or you need any help, um, what I'm going to do is at the end of this, do a quick Q&A. So if everyone can stick by until the end, um, I'll do a quick Q&A at the end and, and I'll get Dan to join me as well, of course. Um, um, and we'll see, um, we'll see if we can help you out. But we will indeed be available on a one-to-one -one basis as well. Because we know, we recognize that this next session is going to be quite advanced. So I am going to hand it over to Dan. 
I'm not going to talk anymore. Um, just if anyone missed uh, the earlier bit, Dan Lescano is our head of Google Ads and Microsoft Ads. Um, myself and Dan, we're the, we're the guys that v visit Google, visit Microsoft, but Dan is the chap that runs and manages all of our campaigns. And he has, he has a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge. Um, and he's going to attempt, oh, there's a bit of noise coming in, but he's going to attempt to present some of that knowledge to you today. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Dan, it's over to you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Matt. Um, uh, thanks, and uh, very, very happy uh, to, to be here today with, uh, with you guys. And um, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get it started. Uh, like Matt said, um, well, we're going to uh, uh, keep uh, this, uh, this session um, at an introductory uh, level, but of course, any questions uh, uh, at all, uh, just, just ask, uh, uh, because we're very happy to, to answer those questions and to, to help you and to help you guys with your, with your marketing, with your online marketing. So today, um, three steps to uh, build a pay-per-click campaign for uh, success. Um, uh, you have heard about um, uh, Google Ads uh, is the main platform where from you can serve uh, uh, ads um, on, on, on all the Google uh, search results page all across uh, the internet. Um, what we're going to be um, uh, discussing today is not only exclusive to uh, Google but also to uh, the other platform being uh, that platform of uh, um, the other uh, partner of ours, uh, Microsoft uh, Advertising. So um, let's uh, get started. Um, well, if you are, uh, have already tried to do some pay-per-click advertising, uh, if you have ever spent some time uh, doing Google Ads, uh, doing marketing, uh, with uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, trying to uh, direct some traffic to your website, uh, getting some leads, trying to find uh, new customers, uh, trying to get more uh, sales online and offline. Uh, then uh, the first thing uh, you've probably noticed is the, that uh, you can face very many uh, different problems. Uh, you're not alone. Uh, we're here to, to help you with, with all uh, those. And, and today, we just want to uh, lay out some uh, very solid grounds that will get you uh, on the right uh, path to avoid uh, uh, all the very many problems that you can face when you run uh, your Google Ads, your Microsoft advertising. Uh, among those uh, uh, common uh, problems where uh, sometimes you have ads that don't seem to be working, underperforming, uh, some of the times uh, you don't get ads to uh, show with the optimal uh, frequency that I'm showing after, I'm showing the right position. Uh, you feel some of the times that you are missing opportunities or that uh, you're not making the most out of your budget. That is uh, very common. You're spending some money, but you're not getting uh, much return on, on your investment. Uh, this approved ads is a very common uh, problem as well. If you uh, happen to be uh, violating uh, Google and Microsoft uh, ad uh, um, uh, policies, then uh, ads get disapproved and, and you, you're stuck there not knowing what, what to do. Uh, sometimes or many times you're running a campaign and you're not getting any conversions. Uh, that means you're not getting phone calls, you're not getting sales, you're not getting uh, bookings, you're not getting what you want, which is finding uh, new customers. Um, and uh, well, uh, sometimes uh, your campaign lacks some, some precision. We're going to talk about all these things uh, in a minute. Uh, the bottom line is that it seems that pay-per-click advertising is a waste of money. And, and, and certainly, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, if you have not, uh, if you don't have the uh, techniques and, and a bit of knowledge on, on how to do it correctly, uh, then it can be a waste of, of your money. And some have called these uh, the Google tax, uh, which is the money that you have to pay Google when you do, are not running your campaigns efficiently and you end up uh, spending a lot of money without getting uh, uh, results, uh, the Google tax, as we, as we call it. But not to worry again, 
uh, we want to, uh, uh, the purpose of, of today's webinar is to, to give you some, some solid foundations uh, for you to understand the, the basic principles, the three basic principles that can, can get you uh, to, to get some results from, from your campaigns. Well, um, probably uh, uh, many of, of you or some of you uh, are doing uh, uh, Google Ads uh, from your uh, Google My Business. Matt has covered with you a lot of uh, this week in the past webinars about Google My Business and how useful it is on, on, on so many different levels. Uh, and from Google My Business, you can launch uh, a, um, a Google Ads. Uh, you just need to go to your main dashboard and click on it and you'll launch a Google Ads. However, the uh, Google Ads uh, you will get when you launch uh, uh, the platform from your Google My Business uh, is a very specific type. Uh, they used to call it uh, AdWords Express or Google Ads Express. Uh, now uh, it's simply um, uh, called uh, a smart campaign, which is uh, one way of doing Google Ads, very simple. Uh, uh, Google uh, keeps it very simple if you happen to, to launch it from uh, your, your GMB, your Google My Business. Still a great platform. And like I said, uh, Google Ads is very, very powerful. Uh, all companies, big and small, from Apple to any single company in the world, is doing Google Ads and they are investing in it because it does bring fantastic results and, and you can get a lot of return for, for your investment. Uh, but again, if you uh, launch your Google Ads from uh, uh, your Google My Business, uh, then what you're going to be getting is a smart campaign and uh, that is pretty limited uh, to a point. What we want you to uh, uh, to learn about is about the expert mode uh, which is uh, the way we run campaigns at, at InfoSaf. Uh, the interface is a lot richer you have a lot more things uh, to to use and uh, with with your uh, ppc uh, campaign um, this uh, uh, what you are seeing now on your screen some differences i'm just going to go quickly through uh, some of the differences some of the similarities between uh, the uh, smart campaign or Google Ads Express, as it used to be known, and uh, Google Ads or expert mode. Both are uh, pay only for clicks. Both are forms of, of uh, pay-per-click uh, advertising. Both run from the same platform. Um, you can start and stop your campaigns at any time. That's the case in, in, in both, uh, both of them. Um, your ads show on, on Google search, on the results page, they show on maps, they show on mobile uh, devices. When it comes to the ability to, to ask your graphically, there's some limitations with a smart campaign. You can only uh, um, uh, target uh, your campaigns locally, while uh, with Google ads, you can pretty much target everywhere uh, uh, around the globe. Uh, campaign management. Well, uh, the, uh, the campaign management uh, is automated. Uh, it's, it's a smart campaign. You don't need to spend much time with it. You set it up uh, very quickly and off you go. Uh, you set your budget, uh, you set your location and the services that you cover and that's pretty much uh, it. Uh, in, in Google Ads, however, uh, you need to spend some, some time, certainly uh, a few hours uh, uh, if not a week, uh, every month uh, to, to keep on working and optimizing your campaigns. When it comes to tracking and reporting, again, it's pretty standard with smart campaigns. You have very powerful tools with Google Ads uh, with the expert mode. Uh, website needed. Well, you don't even uh, need a website with a smart campaign. Uh, you can launch again from your GMB. And what it'll do is that it'll show your listing um, on, on Google Maps and, and the add on Google Maps, and then we'll direct the traffic to your Google listing, uh, to, your, to your GMB. So strictly speaking, it's not advisable, of course, uh, but strictly speaking, you could do without a website, while uh, that is unthinkable if you're running a, uh, an expert mode uh, campaign. Uh, the setup very quickly, of course, again, like I just said, 10 minutes or less, you uh, have your, your ads, uh, little ads uh, going out, with a smart campaign. Um, 
it takes a lot longer, certainly with a with an expert mode, uh, but it's a lot more rewarding, and you'll get a lot more for your for your investment. Um, and and I'm just going to run quickly through these differences. Again, uh, uh, here you have on the left hand side all the additional features that you have with the exit expert mode that you don't have with a smart campaign from ad extensions, uh, very many different ad formats, display video, responsive ads, uh, keyword match types, we'll mention that later on. You can fine tune the type of keywords and how the keywords match the search queries of your users. Advanced locations, do you want to show ads to people who is in your location or who maybe is outside but has an interest in your location or is moving in and out your location constantly. Demographics based on age, gender, uh, detailed demographics. You have in-market audiences. You can set your campaigns to show ads to those who are in the market searching for your products and services and to no one else. Remarketing leads, you can show your ads to uh, people who's visited already your website and so has shown a great interest in, in what, what you do and so are more likely to, to, to buy from you audiences and placements. You can, you can place uh, uh, your ads on specific websites and so on. So just to give you an overview really uh, about uh, some contrast between what you can do with a smart campaign, the ones that the one that you can launch from uh, Google My Business, but certainly you can do a lot more with a proper Google Ads uh, Google Ads campaign set up in the expert uh, mode. Um, and again, not to worry, we're going to give you some some good foundations today about how to work, how to set up your campaign uh, in the uh, in Google Ads. So uh, again. This is what this session is about, building a campaign for success. Uh, everything that we're going to, uh, to, to, to say that I'm going to, to say today uh, can be applied to both Google Ads and Microsoft advertising. So uh, again, three basic principles, three steps to build your campaign for success. And the first one is Define your business and marketing goals. It's a bit of a higher level one, uh, but don't worry, we're going to give you and show you some tools so you can get hands on right after this webinar. You can go and, and start playing with those tools and, and start uh, 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 working on, on your marketing if, if, if you like. And um, so that is the, the basic principle. You need to define precisely your business and your marketing goals. And I'll show you again some tools that will help you with, with that. Secondly, uh, you need to uh, get the structure right. Once you jump onto Google Ads or Microsoft advertising, then you need to uh, have your marketing and business goals uh, clear. And then you need to uh, think about your campaign structure and what uh, campaign types you're going to, uh, to be using. And then thirdly, and this is a very, very important one, you do need to set up conversion tracking. What that basically is, conversions, uh, I mentioned it uh, briefly uh, earlier, uh, is basically what you want to achieve with your campaigns. That can be uh, uh, phone calls, that can be phone fields, booking, sales on your website, basically uh, sales leads, um, that which is going to get you to, to get more sales. So let's get started with, with the first one, uh, define your, your business and marketing goals. Uh, thinking about your marketing goals uh, will, will help you define also your, your marketing of objectives and your uh, marketing, uh, uh, and then uh, your marketing objectives will help you uh, define your account uh, structure. That's why it's important to think about your business and your marketing goals first, and then we'll jump on to the second step, which is uh, thinking about your account um, structure. So let's get started with uh, uh, the uh, business uh, 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 business goals and uh, marketing goals. The first one, uh, the first thing that, that we need to, to say about uh, this uh, process, this first step in the process is you need to be uh, specific. Uh, we all want to get more sales. We, we all want to find uh, new customers, but 
we're going to need to be a bit more precise than that. Is it sales of one product line or another different product line? Um, is it going to be um, um, sales leads in the form of phone calls or is it going to be different? What, am I going to need bookings online? Am I going to need uh, phone fields? What is the preferred way that I like my potential customers to get in touch with me? Um, and in thinking of all of those things, it's very useful to identify demand trends. I may be wanting to sell one product uh, right now, but uh, perhaps that is not the moment. Uh, there is not enough demand. Um, there is no uh, uh, traffic for or searches for that uh, for that product. Or perhaps it's not the right season right now to 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 try and push that product that I want to get off the shelves. Um, and uh, we also need to get the, the budget level right. That's why it's, it's, it's important to, to sit down and to think about um, these, uh, these elements. Uh, now, I, I can see that many of you uh, don't have the time to sit down, go uh, through your books uh, or don't know what is the right time of the year to sell what. Uh, you, of course, you're experts in your industry, but what about, am I going to... Uh, to find the right, right audience online if, I, if I'm wanting to get sales of this specific product or of that specific uh, service. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, how, how do I get the data? How can I get enough data to inform my decisions about what to push at what time, what product lines I'm going to prioritize um, and, and, and where am I going to put my marketing money uh, in Google Ads or Microsoft Advertising? Well, uh, I get it. It's, it's very difficult to, to come up with, with a, a good set of data. But don't worry. There's great tools uh, these days, and this is uh, one of the tools that I like to, to talk uh, about today. It's called Google Trends, and it's pretty amazing. Some of you may, may know about Google Trends uh, already. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, you just need to jump on a browser and search Google Trends and it'll come up. Uh, and, and basically, uh, it gives you a lot of uh, valuable data about any products or services that you want to, to promote, that you want to advertise. And uh, you just need to, to search for one specific. I'm going to give you uh, an example. Uh, here is a, a screen uh, shot of, uh, I search for emergency plumbers uh, here in the UK. And, and here you can see uh, the seasonality, the trends throughout the year uh, for emergency plumbers. Uh, you can see the areas where the searches are, are happening. And then you can see some related keywords to that one that will give you some, some very good ideas for uh, your Google Ads and your Microsoft advertising about what people is really searching when it comes to trying to find the services and the products that, that you offer. Uh, so again, Google Trends is a great tool that you can use anytime. Uh, it's available online, it's completely free, and you can have uh, and get from Google Trends some uh, very, very good um, information and, and, and data that can inform your decisions about what to push and where to put uh, your, your marketing uh, investment. So that is uh, Google, uh, Google Trends. Uh, so again, back to uh, uh, step one in these uh, three steps to uh, build a campaign for success. You need to think about your business goals, your marketing goals, try to be specific, use Google Trends. Just use, use some, some uh, tool like Google Trends to get some data and know what people are searching for and what is it that you can push um, throughout the year and get it right from the start. Like I said, it's important to think about your business goals because uh, giving your business goal, okay, do I want to push this specific product? Do I want to advertise this service in the first uh, quarter of the year? And then the second one, perhaps I'm going to give priority to some other one. Thinking about your business goals, which is sales at the end of the day, but it's good to be uh, a bit more specific. Sales of what a specific service, say, say, uh, sales of what specific product. Um, having that in, in mind, will help you um, uh, define your marketing goals. And your marketing goals are going to, to come to be something like getting phone calls, uh, getting phone fields. Uh, it can be uh, bookings or, or sales online. So 
thinking about a business goal will help you really define your marketing goals in a, in a much, much better way. Again, like I said, business goals, sales, marketing goals, new customers, that's what we want. And that's what uh, Google Ads and Microsoft ad advertising can help us uh, a lot with. So um, again, marketing goals, uh, uh, it can mean different things for each of you, but uh, for all of you, uh, you will need or will come uh, in, the, in the form of visits to your website. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way of finding new customers, is uh, getting your website out there and, and getting new visitors to your website. And that's what Google Ads and Microsoft Advertising is all about, getting traffic to your websites, qualified traffic um, with uh, users that uh, are interested in, in the services and the products that, that you offer. It can be impression of your ads as well, but certainly sales leads, phone calls, phone fields, again, bookings and online uh, sales. Those are the marketing goals. You need to think about them because then you're gonna have plenty of options when you set up Google Ads and Microsoft Advertising and, and you can tell the platform, okay, I'm, I'm wanting phone calls, I'm wanting phone fields, and then all, all the platform and the algorithms will work to try and get you uh, that which you're after. Um, and uh, like I said, once you've defined, uh, you know what your marketing uh, goals are, what your business goals are, you've used Google Trends, and uh, you've sat down and, and you said, okay, I want phone calls, I want phone fields. Now you are in a, in a better position to decide what your campaign structure is going to be. That was our step one, define your business and marketing goals, use uh, uh, tools such as Google Trends that can help you define uh, these goals. So uh, let's uh, move on to uh, the uh, second step, which is get your campaign type and your account structure uh, right. And um, well, if you jump into Google Ads or Microsoft Advertising, uh, this is uh, the um, uh, layers, the, uh, the structure that you would have in your account. At the top level, you have account, then you have your campaigns, your ad groups, your ads, and your targeting uh, methods. It's a lot of things uh, in this in this uh, slide. Don't worry about it. We'll, if, if need to be, I probably will be covering a lot of these in, in coming webinars. So this is just to give you an overview, uh, and then uh, we'll go into into detail. We'll we'll answer your questions. Um, when it comes to campaign types, here you have you have search campaigns, display, audience, shopping, video, and app campaigns. And when it comes to targeting methods. I've just listed one of the uh, uh, many that 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 we uh, that we have. I've mentioned some already. Uh, keywords is the, the the one that comes very easily to mind. But today, these days, we have very many different targeting methods for our campaigns. So, how can we introduce some order, some structure into all these very many different features that Google Ads and Microsoft Advertising uh, uh, provide us uh, with uh, these days? Well, again, like I said. We need to keep in mind uh, business and marketing goals. And if we keep business and marketing goals uh, in, in mind, that is going to tell us what campaign types uh, we're going to be using. And I'll explain this in a second. And then the website, our website is gonna inform and tell us how to organize our ad groups, our ads and targeting methods. So. What about campaign types and marketing goals? What does it have to do one thing with, with the other? Well, basically, uh, the relation and the very close relation between the marketing goals uh, that we have and the campaign types is the following. If we uh, are after conversions, such as phone calls and bookings, then, and that is the only thing we want or, or, or our main focus, then some campaign types are best for that. Search, shopping, and display. If what we want is more uh, branding, increased share of voice, then display audience, video, and app are better campaign types. And, and the reason for that is, um, uh, is this one, is uh, users are, are searching all the time. Some of those don't know you. Some of those are just curious about what you do. Some others have a bit of an interest. They are considering perhaps uh, purchasing uh, um, a product that, that you sell, and then some others are uh, down below the funnel, uh, and they, uh, you know, they're really wanting to uh, to purchase or, or to get in touch, 
uh, with you uh, to know more about your products and services. Probably many of you have seen this, this funnel, the sales funnel. And um, as you can see uh, here, you can see that uh, for some stages uh, in this user journey, as, as, we, as we call it, uh, some complaint pain types are, are better than, than others. Uh, shopping uh, and remarketing for users that are already ready to buy and then BD on display ads for those who are only considering um, perhaps in, in the future uh, getting some of, of the products that, that you offer. Um, and this is what PPC success looks like. I really like this diagram, uh, but again, we'll develop more about that uh, perhaps in, 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 in uh, seminars in, in the future. So again, um, you need to have clear in mind um, what is it that specifically you're after, phone calls, bookings, or perhaps I just want to introduce this new product that, I, that I'm, uh, I'm going to, to be offering, or uh, I just open a new branch and I want people to know about the new branch, then the display and audience campaigns are a better campaign type for, for, for that. Um, what about uh, the website? Uh, Matt, in, in previous uh, webinars, have, um, um, you know, show you and, and, and giving you some some tips about how to improve your your website, how to uh, uh, get people to um, interact uh, better with with your website. Some some SEO tips uh, as well. And uh, well, the website is basically going to inform our decisions about ad groups and the ads that we're going to write and the targeting methods, the keywords that we're going to be using. And the reason for that is quality score. Uh, Google Ads and Microsoft advertising is about advertising, but they are about quality. Uh, they want advertisers to offer uh, uh, quality, they want ads to answer people's uh, needs, uh, they want advertising to be helpful because uh, otherwise people will stop going uh, on the internet and search on, on Google and, and on Bing. So they really care about the quality score and we'll cover some of these uh, in, in future uh, seminars but uh, here's a secret. The higher your quality score, the lower your price per click is. So if you do spend some time and take care about the quality score, the quality of your ads, then you're going to be paying less for your click because Google and uh, Microsoft will like that and uh, will uh, show you further up on the page and will promote your ads uh, much better. And, and, and in the competitive uh, auction, uh, which is uh, how, how PPC works, you'll be paying less than other advertisers. So what do I mean though, anyway? How the website, how can the website inform my decisions about ad groups and ads and the keywords that, that, are, that, I, uh, can, uh, that I can use? Well, um, I have uh, some, some quick examples. Just think that, uh, you know, have a, an online um, website and, and, and I uh, uh, sell, sell shoes. And, and I'm wanting in, in case one, scenario one, I want to sell red shoes. That is the specific product line that I want to promote. And the landing page is uh, shoes.co.uk, is the home page. And then in the second uh, scenario, I'm wanting to uh, uh, sell red shoes, but uh, I'm choosing as the landing page for my ads and for my ad groups, the specific page where the red shoes are. Well, if you think about quality score, then you will know that the second is the best choice. If red shoes is your keyword, you should be directing those ads to the red shoes landing page, not to the home page. It's a better choice to um, direct the traffic to uh, the red shoes uh, landing page. The reason is it's more relevant uh, and it offers a better user experience. Basically, it's a lot more helpful if, if I'm wanting to find red shoes that you show me the red shoes page. It's that simple. Again, relevance and landing page experience. That's the reason why. Um, just another quick example. Uh, it's good to uh, insist a bit on, on the idea. And again, emergency uh, plumbing and uh, uh, the landing page is 925plumbing.co.uk or emergency plumbing and, and I'm uh, Bromley uh, plumbing.co.uk and I have a specific uh, a page on my website where I tell my future customers about the emergency plumbing services. Well, 
it's very clear that the second one, again, is a lot more relevant. Uh, I'm, I'm using emergency plumbing as a keyword, but I'm directing the traffic to 95 plumbing. Uh, I don't even offer that service, and yet I'm using emergency plumbing as a keyword. So again, the content on my website is going to really tell me what I can or cannot advertise efficiently. I can advertise anything I want, really, but there are efficient ways, optimal ways, and not so optimal ways of advertising. So again, think about quality stock call, take a look at your website, and that will tell you what's best doing. Just one more example, more of the same. This one based on, on geographical uh, uh, terms. Um, the keyword is um, the targeting methods I've chosen is uh, Leeds or West Yorkshire. And again, in this case, Leeds is a lot more specific than West Yorkshire. So my ads will get a better quality score uh, because I'm being more precise in, in the first uh, scenario. So that, that's it really. Uh, it's just one uh, idea to, to really get about how to, um, how the website is going to inform the ad groups, the ads and the targeting methods that you're going to be uh, using. Uh, and again, uh, like as we mentioned, campaign types, uh, display or search, well, think about what your goals are, whether you're just doing some branding and increasing your share of voice or something more specific like getting phone calls, then you will choose differently depending on what your business and marketing goals are. So, that was our second principle, our second very important step uh, in building a campaign for success. Get your account structure and campaign types right. And I hope I've shown you how to go about um, deciding on account structure and campaign types. Some basic ideas, some uh, solid grounds, and then later we can keep on building our knowledge and our skills uh, with uh, Google Ads and Microsoft Advertising. That was our second principle. And the third one is set up conversion tracking. This is a very important one and, and, and probably uh, many advertisers uh, forget about this, this important step in your setup. Um, Pay-per-click advertising is a data-driven activity. There's no decision that should be made if you don't have the data that can inform that, that decision. We've seen today Google Trends. There's a lot of data these days that, that can help us make the right decision. And uh, there's no excuse really. So Google Trends, for example, can give us a lot of uh, insight into what people are searching, uh, when and how they are finding the services and the products that, that you offer. But then once we have set up our campaign, it's very important that we set up conversion tracking so we know how many phone calls, how many bookings, how many sales our campaign is generating. So then that can help us improve and optimize our campaign over time. So again, conversions. Those can, those can be uh, phone calls, those can be phone fields, those can be, sometimes it's just impressions when you want to, to increase your, your brand awareness. It can be definitely clicks, or if you have an e-commerce uh, site, th those can be sales on, on your website. So how can we go about tracking and, and knowing uh, uh, these? And, and again, the importance is that, uh, the conversion data, how many phone calls and phone fields that we are going to be uh, receiving is a very valuable data set that we're going to have available. And that data set is going to help us uh, improve our campaigns. They'll help us know what keywords are working, what ads are working, uh, what products and services are uh, more popular uh, among our target audience. That's how important it is to get uh, tracking uh, setup. Again, same idea, more conversion data means better optimization. The more data you have and the more accurate the data that you have, then the better the optimization, the higher the return on investment, the lower you would be paying for your click. And again, you'll make a lot more money if you have all that data that can help you 
make the right decisions when it comes to working on on your campaigns and uh, this is uh, a whole subject on its own like i said today we're just giving you some uh, uh, solid foundations for you to uh, to know what ppc is about and what the best principles are and how to do it right um, going into all the uh, convention uh, setup that we could write a few books about that but certainly be patient we'll be showing you some some uh, uh, tips on, on that today just for you to know what you can be doing when it comes to tracking your conversions you have with microsoft universal event tracking uh, that is a little tag that you uh, add to your website and then when somebody uh, fills in a form somebody um, uh, places an order online uh, the universal event tracking will send that uh, piece of data back to Microsoft Advertising and then Microsoft Advertising, the algorithms will be working to get you more of that, which is what, what you want. Uh, Google makes available Google Tag Manager, which is the same. It's a very neat tool that can help you add uh, snippets of code to your website um, that can, again, uh, provide all those uh, data points uh, from form fields to bookings or online sales. Uh, we will send that data back to either analytics or uh, Google Ads, and then Google Ads will work its magic to, to try and, and, and improve the, uh, the results. Or you yourself, I mean, obviously uh, the algorithms are very intelligent these days, but there's a lot of work that, that we uh, need to be uh, uh, doing, and, and, and that information is very important. So I added, a few keywords uh, uh, last month, and did those keywords generate uh, any any uh, result uh, uh, at all? And and you know, Google Tag Manager, Universal Tracking can can be providing uh, that. Of course, you have heard about Google Analytics. Uh, many websites have Google Analytics uh, added, and uh, Google Analytics is a powerful tool for conversion tracking. It's a bit limited uh, uh, with what you can do, but in conjunction, once you add the three uh, together, Google Tag Manager plus Google Analytics plus Universal Event Tracking, the three uh, platforms can work really well and can provide you with loads of uh, conversion data about um, your, your campaigns. Google Analytics is about a lot more than that, uh, but certainly uh, can help a lot with, with it. These platforms, however, uh, they this one thing they are not great at and they don't offer it at all, and, and that is uh, call tracking. If you are after tracking phone calls, uh, then you're going to need a third party uh, tool for that. Uh, those of you who uh, um, are, uh, are using uh, our platform are familiarized with, with our PPC dashboard. We do provide, uh, provide um, a call tracking uh, solution and uh, this is a typical uh, uh, PPC dashboard, a, a dashboard uh, with the metrics of one of the campaigns that, that we uh, manage on, on behalf of, of our clients, and we can track the, uh, the uh, calls. Then the platform speaks to Google Analytics, uh, Google Tag Manager, and Universal Event Tracking uh, speaks to the platform, and all in synchrony, when all the platforms are speaking to each other, and they have all the conversion data, then they will work their magic and they will try to generate more and more of that which you want, which is phone calls, which is phone fields, which is conversions as we, as we call them. And again, all in synchrony, call tracking, Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Universal Tracking, working together with Google Ads and Microsoft Advertising, that means better results. When you link all the platforms uh, together, that certainly means better results uh, and a lot more, a lot better return on, on your investment. Again, more conversion data means better optimization, better results. That is the idea and that's the important. I can't emphasize it enough. Uh, the more uh, intelligent the algorithms are, uh, the more data we need to provide those algorithms. And so setting up, setting up uh, call tracking is very important. We are uh, about to, uh, to reach the, the end. Uh, just to, uh, to sum up again, if you want to build a campaign for success, define 
your business and marketing goals, jump onto uh, Google Trends, take a look at it. Think about the specific products that, that you want to advertise, the specific services. What time of the year is best to advertise those? So you can wisely put your marketing money in the right uh, place uh, at the right time. Secondly, once you've decided about marketing goals and business goals, uh, think about your campaign structure, think about your campaign types, and think about how the website is uh, set up because that is greatly going to determine how you're going to be setting up your campaign. So uh, it's good to work on your website as well. Uh, and I'm sure that Matt has, has spoken to you this week about it and we'll keep on uh, giving you tips about uh, how to improve your website for conversions and, and so on. And thirdly, set up conversion tracking. Data, we live in, in, in the era of, of data. Uh, this is a data-driven activity. Google and Microsoft love data and you'll get a lot more results if you set up conversion tracking so you can collect some, some good data about what's working and what isn't, isn't working. And that is the uh, end of my uh, presentation uh, uh, today. I hope, well, it's been quite quite a lot. I know I just wanted to, to cover some, some solid grounds for, for you to think about. I hope I've given you some, some uh, good uh, tips and, and some, some tools as well. So you can just jump onto uh, your, your computers, your laptops uh, after this webinar and start using uh, Google Trends so, so you can start seeing what's going on in relation to the products and the services uh, that, that you use. And uh, well, I'm very happy to, uh, to answer any questions. Uh, uh, Matt and, and myself can, can answer any questions. And um, I think it's back to you, Matt. Yeah. Hi, thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Dan. Um, I hope my video is working. It seems to have frozen a little bit. Um, uh, but, okay, I, I'm getting told it's working. Very insightful, Dan. Yeah, dunk. Yes, I agree. Very insightful. Um, Dan, I think what, what I took away from that, the key thing was just at the end there, when you're talking about... Um, tracking um and conversion tracking and uh, and and measuring success yeah um I, I completely agree that um there's no real point in running a, a campaign on google ads and microsoft ads unless you're tracking the conversions because ultimately it, that's how we would operate and we expect you know everyone else to have that as a minimum as well you, you need to know how many inquiries you're getting from a campaign um and if you do track those things then what you can do as dan said is is optimize your campaign around those uh, around those conversions so no thanks dan i thought that was fantastic um we really are taking it um taking it to that next level so felicity's asking um if you're on a, a reduced budget um um obviously due to the current situation what level of budget do you need to run a basic campaign well um, Google recommend Dan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Google um, say they, they anything over six pounds a day. Now um, that's the minimum, isn't it? Really, Dan? Would you say? Yeah. Uh, well, um, uh, both Google and Microsoft and PPC advertising uh, has become very competitive uh, in the last few years. We've seen uh, CPC costs. Uh, there's a, a bit of an inflation, uh, but there are ways, of course. And, and again, it's not about the money that you can spend. Otherwise, it would be very unfair. The the, the advertiser with more money would 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 get more results. And and again. Uh, both Microsoft and Google care a lot about the quality of the advertising. So, Felicity, answering your question, uh, it's, a, it's a matter of um, taking a look at uh, the keywords and it's a function of how many products that you want to, to advertise, uh, mostly. Um, so, it's not the same. You're going to need the more products that you advertise, then the more budget, of course, that you're going to, to need. Also, is a function of the uh, geo-targeting. So perhaps you only want to advertise in Leeds or West Yorkshire, but um, so you're going to need uh, some budget for that. But if you are a national company serving the whole country, of course, uh, things uh, change a lot and, and you're going to need a lot more budget for, uh, for that. So deciding uh, the budget levels uh, is not an easy task, uh, but one of the tools that you can uh, use is uh, definitely... Uh, uh, Google Trends to have a sense about how much demand uh, there is. The higher the demand, you know that there's uh, more budget to, to be put in, into that. Budget as well is a function of your um, 
margins and, and the revenue that the product uh, generates. Uh, so, of course, you want to put more budget on those products that are going to bring you more uh, resource, more return on investment, more revenue, uh, more profits. Um, but uh, there, there are a few tools. Uh, uh, you can also uh, use a uh, keyword planner, uh, which is a tool inside Google Ads and Microsoft to have a sense uh, of, uh, you know, uh, the keywords that would work and how much traffic monthly there is uh, for those keywords. And depending on, on, those, uh, uh, on those elements, uh, you can, you can uh, uh, make a decision about your budget. At the end of the day, like Matt said, there's some minimums, um, there's some metrics and, and we, I don't want to get too, too technical here, could be looking at impression shares and so on later on. But, um, but certainly uh, you want to, it's also a trial and error. So you may want to start with some budget and, and see how that budget works. Sometimes if you fall too short because your ads don't show with the enough frequency, because ads don't show in the right position, particularly on mobile phones that can weigh down the performance of your ads. So you, you may want to try uh, with some small budget first and then try a bit uh, if that doesn't work uh, great you may want to to increase your budget uh, down the line yeah I, I i couldn't have put it better Dan. no i think that's absolutely right it does depend on on the on the industry on the keywords and the size of the campaign um but um you know, we, I, I think it was felicity that said that you know if you are a local business um you know do do rest assured that you can start on a low budget. You know, if you do want to trial these things, you can start on a relatively low budget. Um, and, and when we're talking about low budgets, they can be around 100, 150 pounds a month, but that is really the sort of lowest, um, the lowest level. I see um, another question's come in is, is there a minimum period that a campaign needs to run for? Well, um, what I would say is three months um, is the recommended uh, time that you want to run a campaign for, especially if you're getting someone to manage and build that campaign. And the reason why is because if someone's doing it for you, if, you know, um, if, say, for example, we were running a campaign, um, the first month uh, for anyone um, is trial and error. And um, you run the campaign for as, for as many keywords as you can, as you can get. And, and over that time, the month, two months, you start to kind of take away some of the keywords that aren't really converting into inquiries or clicks, um, good conversions. So you start to kind of remove those keywords from the mix and that's called campaign optimization. So a lot of, lot of work around keyword optimization, budget optimization. So these things can't happen, happen overnight, it tends to usually take a month or two to things to really just start taking off. Um, so it is a kind of three month. Um, Andrew, so we've got a couple of a bit of time now for Q and A. So um, I'll just dive straight in. Um, and Dan, if you want to just stay on here, just in case. Um, what Andrew says? What's the opinion of small business using Google Ads um, who works in the same space as big spending competitors? Yeah, we see this all the time. So for example, uh, bathroom uh, bathroom fitter versus bath store in Victoria plumbing. That's a really yeah. good question, Dan. Yeah, that? that's a that's a good one, and uh, uh, like I said, uh, it's a, a very competitive uh, area of uh, online advertising, and you may be uh, up against a big advertiser. Like I said, uh, it's not all about budget. Uh, not everything is decided uh, based on on budget. I did mention quality score, so Google and Microsoft care a lot about the quality of your advertising. So in, in a like-for-like -like situation, if you were to be willing to pay, say, uh, one pound for a, a given keyword, if your ad uh, offers a better quality than that of your competitors, uh, your ad will go fast and you'll be paying 90 cents rather than, than the pound that the uh, big guy was willing willing to pay. But uh, there are different ways. You may want to focus on, on some local area and, and, and become uh, the best in, in that area. Uh, you may want to take a look at, at what your competitors are offering on, on the website, what the unique selling points uh, are, and try to, to offer something, something different. Uh, local businesses, I mean, people uh, really appreciate uh, and want to, to, to buy local. Um, um, so uh, that is a, a very uh, good tool that, that you have. Uh, in your hand to uh, set up the targeting of your campaigns to uh, smaller areas, uh, perhaps. Uh, so the smaller the area, for, for a same budget, you're, if you reduce the area a bit, that, then you become stronger in that area. And so uh, guys uh, spending 
uh, a lot of money uh, may find it difficult to compete against you. Again, uh, uh, focusing on, on, on your local area as well uh, is something that Google and Microsoft like because your ad, your ads will be more more relevant. Just to mention a few a few things, Andrew. It's a, it's a very good question. Uh, yours um, competition is is there. So uh, focus about quality, uh, both of your advertising, of your website, and of course uh, the unique selling points that, that that you have to offer. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, good, good answer. Um, in terms of uh, Tom asked, asked uh, a good question. Um, Tom says on Google Trends, can you set up keyword reports so it sends weekly, monthly reports on keywords you've set up? Um, well, uh, Google Trends will give you an idea of related uh, keywords, uh, and it has uh, some very interesting uh, data when it comes to uh, seasonality. Um, well, uh, probably using the API would be very complex. Uh, you could you could use some some key, uh, key, some weekly sent to your to your mail, um, but perhaps you're better off if you want uh, some more. Uh, uh, weekly data, monthly data, uh, you can head to uh, the Google Ads interface itself, perhaps use the Keyword Planner, something that perhaps will will dedicate a, a webinar in the, in the future. Uh, uh, Google uh, Trends has a lot of data, but uh, there's not many ways of automating reports. Uh, you'll need to jump every time that you want to find data for a given search. Uh, you'll need to jump on your browser and search for it. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. When should PPC start on a brand new website? Uh, ROI is the main objective, return on investment, main objective. Presumably, InfraServe can run a campaign. Well, yes, um, Graham, um, we, we often build websites at the same time as um, starting a new campaign. So uh, quite often we um, get a lot of people asking us for help with, with PPC, uh, Google Ads. Um, and we often turn people away. Um, the reason being is because, as Dan said earlier, the website is critical to how the campaign will work for you. Um, you can run a PPC campaign, but um, we say it's a 50-50 partnership. And this is something that Google told us once, and it really stuck with me. As Google said, it is a 50-50 partnership. Um, we can give you as much quality traffic, or a PPC campaign can drive as much quality traffic as you want. But ultimately, the website is the converting factor. And not only the website, but the business, um, the pricing, your, you know, your, how competitive your pricing is, how good service the service is even to how you answer the phone. There's many, many elements of a campaign that need tying up. So um, one thing we do um, as a company is we don't just run a, a PPC campaign. We'll do a holistic, have a holistic approach. We'll be looking at the website. We'll be even talking to you about how you're going to handle inquiries. Yes, we go as fast as talk to you about how we recommend you um, deal with those inquiries that are coming in. But we make sure that your website's optimized perfectly well so that if traffic comes in, it can convert, it gives the best chance of converting into an, an inquiry. And one of the things we did on Saturday is we looked at the perfect landing page and the perfect promotion page. Well, I'm really pleased that Dan did this today because that um, that visual that I showed everyone of, of a landing page is exactly how we would recommend a landing page to work on a, on a PPC campaign. So a PPC campaign would be set up and many different landing pages could be built for each area of your business. So, for example, you know, um, plumbing, uh, electric, electrician, da -da. we can set up landing pages dedicated for each, um, each area of the business. And, and it's a holistic approach. But um, when should the PPC start? Well, if it's a brand new website, no, go ahead and, and, and start the campaign because a brand new website is probably going to be at its best. You know, it's brand new, it's fresh, it's modern. Um, everything should be in place already. So go ahead and start that campaign. And don't get, don't get us wrong. If you've not got the perfect website, don't worry. You know, do not worry. Um, still start a campaign and, and tweak the website along the way accordingly. You can change things, you know, depending on conversions. Um, we also use Google Analytics. So one of our future sessions is going to be about Google Analytics. 
um, and, and maybe Dan's going to jump, jump into that session in the future as well. And yeah. we're going to show you how you can look at traffic on your website and look at how people are behaving on the website. So if someone's spending longer on one page and then calling you on the back of that and then not on the other, we, we would maybe alter the website depending on that information. As Dan said, data and insights is key to all of this. So go ahead and start that campaign. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, Dan, do you want to add anything to that? Well, yeah, I, I was going to say that particularly when the website is new, uh, you don't uh, uh, have the uh, uh, SEO reputation that an older website would have. So PPC is great for that. Uh, um, when it comes to PPC or SEO, we, we believe that those uh, both approaches, both uh, set of techniques to uh, get found uh, should coexist. But PPC is definitely always uh, is good and you see big brands and small use it all the time um, simply because it's not possible to rank organically all the time for everything uh, but particularly when your website is new it'll take some time to start showing on organic results then from the very start uh, it's a good uh, choice to, to do some PPC for your new website. Good. Okay. I'm just looking to see um, any other questions, any other questions, feel free, put a comment in, feel free to ask questions about anything digital marketing, um, Google Trends, Google Trends is a nice tool. It does show you kind of a top level overview of, of the search traffic throughout the year. Um, and um, and see, uh, you've mentioned there that some of the terms are only being shown as being in London when set to England. Why is that? Why are some of the terms set as London? Um, um, well, uh, it might be if you can uh, give us the exact search term. But uh, it might be that uh, Google is not catching enough traffic in other areas. Also, bear in mind that uh, uh, Google Trends uh, always looks at past data. So it's data for the past 12 months. Uh, either uh, make sure that, that the, the country is set to, uh, to the UK. You said you, you've done that. Perhaps you are inserting the location term in the search term itself. Uh, or perhaps uh, it's, it's definitely catching on the uh, traffic in, in uh, uh, London. Yeah, exactly. So um, hopefully everyone can see my um, yeah. screen here. First aid training. Let's just do that. So all I do is go to type into Google, Google Trends, and you should see um, the search results give you give you the right link um, or it's trends.google.com. And you type in your keyword. But one thing you need to make sure is that you select um, United Kingdom because um, it defaults to United States. So what we'll do yeah. is first aid training, United Kingdom. And what Google Trends shows you is the search, the interest over time. And it will, it will have a little um, exclamation here as well. It, it represents the search interest um, over, over the year. So we can see here, um, when's this? This is 22nd to 28th of December last year. The search volume for first aid training was at its lowest point in the year. Um, and the highest point was about here, 19th to 25th of January. So now as a business owner, I know that I need to ramp up my marketing um, just after Christmas. And guys, don't forget what I was saying the other day is we start to see a huge increase in searches even um, in Boxing Day and <laughs> after, after Boxing Day. So for this particular industry, it might be a bit different, but we're seeing that increase here. And then look, it starts to really ramp up over January and into February um, and then so on. But then it, it, it has taken, uh, as you can see, in this last month, you can see the dip. And it would be really interesting to see other other keywords. So let's type in another one. And um, just for just for out of interest, let's put holiday accommodation and see how that's been looking. Um, and so going back to last July, there was a peak. But then here, which, yes, again, is, is December because everyone's buying presents and spending their money. The, the, the interest um, does die away. But I, I want to say to everyone, no, it's really important not to stop um, your PPC campaign, um, not to put it on pause. Um, and if anyone's pausing their campaign at the moment, we understand why. Um, we completely understand why because sometimes it's more of a... Um, cash issue but what i would um and i'm sure dan will concur with this um 
even though the search volume has dropped at this time, so even if we go over here, you can see how the search volume for holiday accommodation has dropped significantly. I can't get my words out. What I would say is that there are still people searching. There's people, there were people on Google and Microsoft typing in um, and looking for holiday accommodation. And for most industries, it's exactly the same. And we are still seeing people searching for most of our vast um, customers that we have. They're looking for solicitors. They're looking for plumbers. They're looking for wedding venues and, and wedding photographers. This, this stuff is still happening, albeit on a lower search volume. So what I recommend is don't pause. Don't cancel any campaign at the moment. Keep it running because it's pay-per-click. Now, with pay-per-click, you only get charged when someone actually has done a search, has that intent. They are interested in using or finding someone in your, you know, in your business. Um, and they've got that intent and then they click on your ad. And when they click on your ad, that's only when you get charged effectively or when your budget is used up. So the beauty of pay-per-click is it looks after itself. You simply won't use up all of the budget at this particular time of year because search volume is lower. But any searches that are happening, you're, um, what's the word? I'm, you're, you're, you're really scraping the barrel, but you are getting those searches at least. You're getting found and you're still potentially getting highly valuable inquiries. And a good success story of this was um, one of our customers just turned around to us the other day and said, just got an inquiry. It's a commercial job. It's commercial work. Um, and it's for it is for painting It's something as simple as that. But it's a painting job for commercial um, it happening in a school, but not till August. But he thinks that if he wasn't running his PPC campaign now, he wouldn't have got that job in for August. So it's it, it's super essential to keep these campaigns running. Um, but don't worry, the, the budget will look after itself because the, the, the traffic's lower. Dan, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Pay per click. Uh, uh, you've you've said it. Uh, you don't pay if there isn't uh, people searching. If there isn't an interest for for what you do. Uh, going back to what we uh, uh, talked about today, targeting and getting the targeting right. If you have uh, set your targeting correctly, then you don't need to worry uh, because you know that if somebody is clicking for, uh, on your ad, is somebody. Uh, that uh, is interested in, in your service or, or product. So sometimes you think that, well, uh, right now there's not much interest or, or traffic is, is low. Google Trend may be confirming that, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's best to uh, get fewer jobs or fewer sales than none at all. So, so it's best to keep your campaign then doing that work for you. Absolutely right. No, I, I completely agree. We've got one question here. Um, off a Josh. Well, it's not our Josh because our Josh is in the chat is Matt Weil. So hello, Josh. Um, hi, you've you said you've tried ads before, but didn't get much from them. OK. And, yeah. OK. So you've had a bad experience. I think it might be the website. Do I need to sort the website out before running ads? Do you need to sort the website out? Well, um, yes, it could be the website, um, but it's it could also be the way that the ads were set up. It could be the way that the campaign was built. Dan's touched on some very basic stuff today. There's a lot more to it. Um, and you can see how much there is to think about when running a campaign. So it could actually be the, how the campaign was built, how the campaign was optimized. And also, were, what were you tracking conversions? Because a lot of people say um, campaigns don't work. But unless you're tracking phone call inquiries, it, it is difficult to judge. Um, and, and, uh, in terms of your website, yes, the website plays a big part. Um, what, like I say, what we tend to do um, is if someone's running a campaign with us or, or wants to start a campaign with us, um, and if they just need a small website, maybe five, eight pages, um, we'll just build it for free. Because the reason why is we believe that um, um, by building a website, even for free, um, and getting a good campaign working, essentially that will last longer in the long run. So that campaign will really fly through the roof, the inquiries will come, and und undoubtedly you probably want to put more money into the campaign. So we're a big fan of getting the website up and running um, and, and getting it going. So yes, it might be the website. If you did do it yourself, then yeah, it, it's, probably, it's probably that. How would you choose between Google Ads and Facebook Ads, Andrew? Well, um, I would always recommend doing both. Um, a marketing mix is essential. Um, Facebook Ads is very different to Google Ads. Um, I would say Facebook Ads is better for branding, better for awareness, engagement, um, and, a, and, and a very much a different type of audience. 
Google Ads is there because people have an intent. They need to get in contact with a business like yours. There's an intent there. It's maybe an urgent requirement or it may be something that they're looking to purchase even today. So the, there's, a, there's a stronger intent. But with Facebook Ads, what you can do is um, I would, I'd be looking to run a promotion um, or, or an offer or I'd be looking to build brand awareness. But I'd be, I'd be working it alongside a Google Ads campaign and, and, I'd, and I'd have a Google Ads search campaign, a Facebook Ads campaign and a, a display campaign. And what a display campaign can do is um, it would be, you know, potentially banners and, 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 and design graphics on various different websites. Um, you may all, have, I'm sure everyone's come across this before. You know, when you've maybe been looking at a pair of shoes on a website and then you leave that website and a few days later, you start seeing those shoes on other websites following you around the internet. And we all think it's a bit like Big Brother. Like, how do they know I've been looking at those shoes? Well, that's what we call a display campaign, a, specifically a remarketing campaign. And um, Andrew, what I'd recommend is with a Facebook campaign, you have that, you have a Google campaign and you have that display remarketing campaign as well. And what that does is it gets you found so on social media, it gets you found on search. And but then what it also does is we know that most people don't call you or don't book straight away and they need a bit of a reminder. A display remarketing campaign and indeed a Facebook remarketing campaign gets your business back in front of that person that was looking at you a few days or a few weeks earlier. So it's a real sort of, again, a very holistic pro approach. Um, okay, so we've, we've gone a bit over time today. It's 10 past three. Um, uh, and I think it's time for us to wrap up. Um, I hear there's a good question, though. Can a separate, there's one last question. Can a separate telephone number be used for call tracking? Well, Dan, I'll let you take this one. Can a separate telephone number be used for call tracking? Yeah, there are, very, uh, there are, there are a few different methods uh, for uh, call tracking. Uh, very briefly, perhaps we'll dedicate a webinar for, for that, but very briefly, and, and answering your question straight away, yes, you can set up a specific telephone number uh, for your Google Ads, um, but uh, then that means that uh, it, that would work only when uh, your only source of traffic is, is that channel, Google Ads, say a website that is nowhere else to be found, and you have that specific uh, telephone number that will tell you that anybody uh, calling uh, to that number came through through an ad. Uh, when that's not the case, which is in, in most uh, normal situations, then uh, you would have what we call uh, dynamic number replacements. It's a little snippet of code that we place on the website. And what it does is it changes your uh, telephone number on your website to a forwarding number only when the user click on an ad and landed on your website. And that's how the system will know that that user uh, dialed the phone and called your business after having clicked on, on an ad. It's just a, a very a simplified scenario. Again, there are very many different uh, call tracking uh, methods, but answer your question, yes. However, uh, it might not be very precise if you just dedicated that telephone number and put it on your website. Uh, so the most precise way uh, is uh, um, dynamic number uh, replacement. And, and, and that will tell you uh, what the, 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 the phone call came from. Was it Google Ads, Microsoft, Facebook? And, and that's a very precise way of uh, uh, tracking calls. Great. Thank you, Dan. Good answer. So, yes. Um, no, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for the uh, feedback. Um, we hope it's been helpful today. A little bit of a different one today. Um, just wanted to see how it would work. Um, hopefully, it's been good for you. Um, um, what we recommend everyone to do is just check out infoserve.com forward slash COVID. Um, so that's our landing page for these webinars. On there, you can see more information in terms of following us on social media. So if you just go down to the um, footer of our website, or if you just go to infoserve.com, you can follow us just at the bottom of the website. You can see our um, social media links, I believe. Um, if, if, if they're not there, we'll send them, we'll, we'll make sure they're on the page imminently. So please follow us on social media. Please go to forward slash COVID. 
Um, and if you want to reach out to uh, myself, um, and I've got Josh with me and Dan with me, all the team are here, um, we will be able to answer any questions one-to-one. -one. What are we covering tomorrow? Um, you've got three webinars at the same time. Um, okay, so good question. What are we covering tomorrow? It looks like we're covering social media. So we've got Sam joining us tomorrow. And Sam is head of our Facebook um, team and our Instagram team here at InfoServe. So it's a very, again, a very different one tomorrow. And we're looking at social media. So myself and Sam are going to be diving into how you can create engaging content and how you can get more followers on your Facebook and Instagram page. And I'm sure Sam's watching this now um, looking forward to that one. So completely understand if you have to check out another webinar tomorrow, completely understand, but hopefully you can join us tomorrow. Um, it's a good one that we've got lined up. Um, but yeah, we're going to head off. Thank you again. And um, we'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.